Hi everyone, today we are going back to Rosalind to solve yet another problem. We are going to use our GC content function we wrote in our last DNA toolkit video. Let me switch to Rosalind webpage right now. And we are still doing bioinformatics stronghold and we are going to do computing the GC content. But this time it's not as simple as copy, paste and run the function we wrote in our last video. If we look at the sample data set that Rosalind provides, we can see it's much more sophisticated this time. This time we are provided data in FASTA format. You can always click and read about the FASTA format if you're not really familiar with that yet. So this time we are giving strings, not one string, DNA strings in FASTA format and we are supposed to return an ID, which is this part here, an ID of the string that has the highest GC content. Of course, you can copy and paste our function from the last video, go back to the sample data set and by hand just copy and paste these strings and run them against the function and see which one returns the highest value and then come back to Rosalind and provide the answer like that. But let me show you one of the sample data sets you're going to get when you're going to click download the data set. It's actually very big. So there's a lot of strings here. And we have to find the one again that has the highest GC content and return its ID and the percentage. So I suggest we create an automated approach and read from the file. We're going to save this in a file and read from it. This is a very basic example of a data science because we need to read data, we need to clean data, we need to format data, and then we need to run operations on that data. And that's how we're going to get our results. So this time it should be much more interesting because we're going to write some code to do all of these steps I mentioned. Let's go back to our code editor. Okay, so again, we are still on stronghold and I have already created a file gccontent.py, which is empty. What I want to do here is I want to copy these steps we need to perform. So we need to read data from the file. It's a faster formatted file. We're going to clean and prepare the data. We're going to format the data and we're going to run a needed operation. In our case, it's a GC content calculation. So in the end, we're going to collect the data, meaning we're just going to print out the result in a specific format that Rosalind accepts. Okay. So we're going to go through these step by step. First thing we need to do, we need to be able to read from the file. It is a very basic function. We're going to add this right now. So if you're learning Python, you probably covered reading and writing from files, but here we're going to open the file with just read permissions because we're going to call this function. We're going to pass a path to our file we need to open and we're going to return this list comprehension. So this way with list comprehensions, we're going to read line by line from the file and every single line is going to be a list entry instead of just one huge string. You probably came across a very simple read function, which looks like that, just read. Okay. But this is going to return every single string in a string format. But for us, it is more important to have a list or a dictionary as we're going to see when we work on our function here. Okay. So I'm going to return that to its original state. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste the function that we wrote in our last lesson, which is GC content, right? Here it is. No changes from our last DNA toolkit video. It's exactly the same. Now we need a couple of variables to store our data. Let me copy and paste that from my snippets. I'm going to go through that. Actually, we should move this here because this indicates reading from the file, FASTA file. Okay. I'm going to leave all of these comments here. So it is much easier to follow. So in this one is just the name, right? So we're going to name our variable. So it's easy to understand which variable holds what. So we're going to store a contents of the file in a list. So this dictionary is empty here. We're going to store labels and the DNA data under that label. We're going to see that as well when we run our function. And this is just for our next piece of code here. So this for loop is a very basic for loop. We are going to loop line by line in our dictionary because again, this function, when we read the file, it uses list comprehension 
to return a list. And then we can loop through every entry in the list and check does it, the entry start with this symbol. If it does, we're going to create a label, which is a key. And then if it does not start, we're going to accumulate the value of that key. Why do we need that? Let's go back to Rosalind and copy this sample data set and you'll see why we actually need that loop. Okay, I have copied that. Let's go back to our code editor and we're going to create this new folder here. We're going to call it test data. Okay, and in test data, we're going to create a lot of different files that are needed for all the problems in Rosalind. So the first file we're going to create is going to be called GC content dot txt okay because we are already linking that file right here let me actually collapse that part so we see more of the code so we are reading this gc content file let's paste our lines sample data lines here as you can see that we are provided a label and everything that is associated with this label but what you can see that this line number two and number three are separate lines, even though they're supposed to be basically this. If we would be provided this, that is much easier. Our loop would be much simpler. We read first line as a label, the second line as a contents. And again, first, second, first, second. But for some reason, the FASTA format decided to do this. Okay, so we need to read this first. So we're checking in our loop. Let's actually do this. This might be a little bit more visible here. So in our loop, we're reading the first line. We're checking, does it start with this symbol? Yes, it does. So we're going to use this as a key in our dictionary. So we're going to keep looping and adding every single line after that as a value to that key. So at some point, it's going to come across this symbol again. Oh, it says, okay, that's symbol again here. We're going to create a key this time again. So the next key is going to be this. And here it's going to keep looping and adding a line to that key. So now we have two keys and every single key has a value of these accumulated lines. Two, three, five, six, eight, nine. Okay. Again, that's a very good thing you can practice here by debugging it yourself. Try running a debugger if you don't understand or ask in our chat so we can maybe go through that line by line. But I definitely suggest using a debugger if you don't understand exactly what's happening here. So before we actually go any further, let's try just basically printing out what's in this file so we can see what this function returns. Let me just do a quick print here and we're going to print out FASTA file, okay? We need a FASTA file. So I have saved this file right here and we're going to see what this function, read file, returns into our FASTA file, okay? So we can see we are returned a list and we have this entry. And as we saw, this line was number two and this line was number three, even though they are kind of the same piece of genome. This is why we need to read a data in a faster format. And here in this for loop, we're going to clean that data as well. Okay. So now we've seen what faster file contains after we read the file into it. It's a list. Now we should look at this loop and see what it does to our list. And this is actually the part where we clean and prepare our data. Okay. So we are storing this output from this for loop into this dictionary. Let's do this now. Let's print and see every single step of what is happening. Okay. Fast uh, dictionary. Let's run this now again. Okay. Now we can see that we started with a list, which is this. We had a label, DNA, DNA string, label, DNA, DNA. Now we have a very nicely formatted dictionary, which is of course really fast to search in and perform operations on. So we have a label and we have strings combined right here. We have a label, strings combined. So we have a key, value, key, value, key, value. So this part is definitely cleaning and preparing the data so it's easier to work with. Okay, so the next step we need to do is actually just one line. Let me copy and paste that from my snippets. So this is a results dictionary. It's being created right here 
because we're going to return that dictionary. Let me actually move this file a little bit so you see a bit more. So here we use not a list comprehension, but actually a dictionary comprehension. So what we are doing right here, we're creating this results dictionary on line 37, and we're going through our newly created FASTA dictionary here, which has, as we've seen, nice and clean key value, key value pairs. And we're creating a new dictionary with a key, which is this, this, and that. But instead of this value of a DNA string, we are returning GC content value, which as we know from our last video, returns a number, a percentage. So let's print this step as well. So it is a results dictionary. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we had our list. We had our dictionary that has a clean data in it. And now we have this nice and clean dictionary with labels and the percentage of GC content in those strings. Okay, so again, list with dirty data, we're going to call it, because we just read it from a file, we didn't format it, we didn't prepare it. Then we clean the data, we prepared that data to be used to create this final dictionary with the values. And now the only thing we need to do is just look at these values. So we're going to call this formatting. Format the data, store the data in a convenient way. This is a very convenient way. And we can also move this here as well because we're formatting it and we're running our GC content all in one line with the dictionary comprehension. Okay, so we are ready for our final step, which is looking for a maximum value in values of our new dictionary. And our new dictionary is this. And as we remember, it contains labels and numbers as the values. So this is a beautiful built-in Python function and we are giving it our new dictionary here. And this part here says, okay, I'm going to iterate through every single key in that dictionary I'm provided. And I'm going to look at the value associated with this key. And I'm going to find the value which has the largest number. And I'm going to return a key associated with this largest number value. I'm going to leave a link in the description as well if you want to go back and look at the max function because it does work a little bit different when you have a list or you have some other data structure compared to a dictionary. Okay, and then the last piece of code we need to write is we need to collect our data, right? To submit to Rosalind, which is this. So this is a very easy piece of code right here. We are just printing out the value here and we're saying, okay, so can you go to that dictionary, use that key that we got from here, and we're pasting it right here, and return the value of from this dictionary that is associated with this key. So again, the easiest way is to print out, and that's what we're doing right here. Let's try running our code, and we can see that's the answer. It returned this here. So this is the answer we have, and it's ready for Rosalind submission. Or is it? Let's go back to Rosalind one more time. And we can see that for some odd reason, the sample output has to be this. And if you look at this, these have these markers, which indicate a label and the output requires no marker. Of course, you can copy and paste and just remove that marker here before you submit it. But let's actually do it in Python. Okay, that's why we're here. We need to see how we can do these amazing things in Python. So um, maybe you can just take five seconds to think how you can do that yourself and then we can do it together, okay? Okay, so here we are printing the key part of that dictionary. How about we actually start printing it out from the first symbol and we skip the zeros symbol, which is that mark. So we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to save that and run. And as we can see, this output is ready to be submitted. Let's actually go back to Rosalind and request our huge data file. Okay, so let's request our big data file right now. And let's go back to our code editor so I can paste it in and you can see what I have got. So we're going to override this sample data set and here is the file with a lot of labels and of course the data here. Okay, let me save this file now. Make sure it's saved, just to make sure we're running this code against this file. And now we're gonna run our code again, 
and this is the answer we got. Let's copy. Let's go back to our Rosalind. And let's paste it in and hope it's correct. Again, we can see that this is the format it's expecting. Submit. Okay, congratulations, you solved this problem. All right, so again, you can go back to explain here. I definitely recommend to read these things on top of what we do in our videos. And there is actually a little bit more explanation here. Um, it says here that the error it accepts is up to one, two, three, basically three decimal points. Let's actually go back again to our code editor. Maybe you've spotted this part right here. Let me actually close this. We don't need this anymore. When we are calculating GC content, we are calling round function and we are rounding up to the sixth digit. One, two, three, four, five, six. But Rosalind expects us to round it up to three. So this is still fine. Okay, so this is it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed this part here. It's going to get so much more interesting from now on because we're not going to copy and paste our code and run a single line of DNA against our functions anymore. We're going to kind of increasingly write more and more code and different algorithms to perform on our data. And as always, if you have any questions, please make sure to pop in into our Telegram or Matrix chat and ask questions. This is the best way to learn. If you don't understand some of this code, use a debugger to go step by step. If you still have any questions, please copy and paste the part that you are having issues with, paste it into our chat and let's discuss. I have started a Medium blog to mirror these video lessons as well, so they are more or less the same content on both. And you can as well follow me on Twitter or Mastodon. So this is it for today. Thank you very much again. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.